All right. So this is my approach to hyperangulated video laryngoscopy. First, uh, just a quick second about positioning. A little bit of controversy about positioning for hyperangulated VL. Um, there is some, I think, poor evidence to say that neutral is better than sniffing. But anatomically, I think things make sense that you have the patient in sniffing position. I think it's unsettled. Um, I will leave the patient in whatever position that they are in, but I will be biased towards sniffing. Um, do what you feel is uh, most appropriate. So let's proceed. Again, I always begin with proper uh, mouth opening, cross finger mouth opening, push on the corner of the, the mandible. Uh, mandibular teeth then cross finger stabilize over the maxillary teeth and then always routinely enter uh, with your blade obliquely and that way the handle is never going to hit the chest of a patient but don't wait for that to be an issue just do it routinely right and then what you're going to do is do epiglottoscopy you know you're slowly walking down looking for the epiglottis right and then you're going to get into the um, you're going to get into the molecula and you're going to get this kind of view. Um, it's a bit dark, um, hopefully you can see that, but that's about, that's the view that you want. It's a bit counterintuitive because again, a lot of people think that this is the, the better view, right? And uh, uh, the problem is, is I'm looking up, I'm looking up to the anterior tracheal wall and that makes me have to manage two curves, right? So a deliberately restricted view, and we describe it as a 50-50 view. So 50% of the glottic opening, right? And then 50% of the screen real estate, right? So that's the view um, that you're gonna begin with. And if you're using endotracheal tube, you're gonna shape your endotracheal tube with a stylet at about 60 to 70 degrees. Yes, you can use a rigid stylet. We prefer this kind of stylet. And uh, the same thing, uh, always enter from the corner of the mouth. You enter from the corner of the mouth, always a look in the mouth, watch your device, whatever, disappear, and then you'll see it in the screen. And you'll see it approach posteriorly. By me rotating the endotracheal tube towards the midline, it comes up anterior, right? It's the same thing as I showed in the other view. Now you're gonna just watch uh, the cuff disappear at this point. Um, I'm gonna do a pullback three centimeters don't do this for the first time on a patient, have somebody else pull it out three centimeters, but you can do that thumb flick, it looks cool, and it works. And then drop or rotate counterclockwise as you push it down. And again, what does that do? Uh, normally when I get in through, or anybody gets in through the cords at this point, you're still gonna hit the anterior tracheal wall. By rotating it to the right, or first of all, pulling it back makes the end of the endotracheal tube soft and flexible right um, and then rotating in this direction now the end the distal portion of the endotracheal tubes in the same trajectory as the trachea and the bevel is positioned open face up instead of open face here right so that's that's the uh, that's what you do the issue comes up is remember the driver study the driver study that came out saying routine use of a bougie um, and the reason why that was a benefit was because when you get a restricted view unintentionally um, like this is that as your tube approaches it sometimes you lose your view so what what can you do in this situation well you, you, you can plan on your trajectory and place it where you think it is and then you can do an exaggerated view right um, a more hyperangulated view without messing up with the teeth and you'll see the cords above it and uh, you proceed as we did in terms of pulling out the stylet and rotating to the right okay um, the, the key part in terms of deliberately restrictive view is, uh, is uh, it'll do two things. One is it drops the larynx to make access to the glottis easier, but it also makes advancement easier. So as long as you can get it to the glottic inlet, um, if you have to have a bigger view to get it there and be sure that you have it, just make sure you drop it before you push the tube down, okay? What about using a bougie? The problem with the bougie is out of the package, it's straight, and this in front of me is not straight in front of me. It's around the corner. So when I put in a straight device um, here, this is what's gonna end up happening with this straight device. There's no way that I can make this work with a bougie out of the package. So I, I, it drives me nuts when people say that, yeah, you can use a bougie. You can, but you have to do one of two things. One is that you have to um, bend the bougie like this to get around the corner 
and that will work and it will often retain its form enough for you to get it. And this is the same thing then as the, as the driver study. You're getting deliberately restricted view, you watch it go in, then you put your, your, uh, your endotracheal tube over it. Uh, when you do that, you're never going to do what I'm doing here right now. But don't wait for hold up, as I said. Don't wait for hold up here. Just routinely, when your tube's going in, rotate it to uh, counterclockwise to avoid it getting hung up. Right? So I don't want people to react, react or have to know a cue. I want you to mitigate it by, again, doing these little things that I, that I just showed you. There are a couple bougies that are on the market um, that are, 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 uh, have a softer malleable tip, the USB by Rich Leviton and Intersurgical. And then there's uh, another uh, um, steerable bougie that's on the market um, that uh, um, I'll refer to in uh, a post that's going to be on MCRIT and uh, on our site soon. So those are the, the key principles with uh, hyperangulated video laryngoscopy. Do this stuff routinely and you won't run into an issue. That's it.